when uh, Israeli Prime Minister Rabin, he stood up to say, we have to admit we came to a land for, with people and those people have rights, they assassinated him. They couldn't believe that one of them is saying that we made a big lie. And since the assassination of Rabi, the right wing have got their way in changing facts on the ground in the country. Look, this is the terminal I'm telling you about. So this is the terminal. Anybody who wants to exit or enter Abu Dis should pass through this terminal, just like the one that you will be seeing at the Kalandia checkpoint. Also another terminal. And you have to have a permit now only for West Bankers to exit the ghetto. Very soon, just like it's happening with uh, Bethlehem, I as a Jerusalemite will also be requested to have a permit before I enter the West Bank. And that's where my social problems will start, the nightmare of not having my children seeing their father. And look how they are making things so beautiful around the wall and the terminal so that the Israeli passers-by will not feel the guilt of imprisoning human beings behind those walls. To that extent, they are so sensitive. They really perceive us as inhuman and not human beings, the Israelis. And they want us to sympathize with them. How can I tell my daughter that those are the same people who faced the crimes against humanity in the Holocaust? How can I convince her? How can I convince her to, to, to sympathize with them? We have nothing to do with the Holocaust as Arabs and Palestinians. We have nothing to do with it. But how can I, on human level, ask her to sympathize with that crimes against humanity and sympathize with the, with the Jewish people? How can I? When she sees the victims of Holocaust are conducting the same Holocaust but on me and in my land and for no reason, just because they deny my existence and deny my rights on this land. Despite all the compromises I gave to live and to coexist in this land. is going towards apartheid and in very quick steps this is apartheid there is no legal decisions now introduced to make it legally apartheid but the daily practices are apartheid the outcome of the land confiscation of the building of the wall of the ghettoization of the palestinian people of the you know the the the, the, the masters making the settlers the masters of the land is a process towards legal apartheid. You like it or not, that's the circumstances. Now look, this is the wall from the other side. We are on the West Bank now, Terry. Yes, we are on the West Bank. We are on the other side of the wall. And it took us half an hour to reach the other side of the wall. So we were standing just behind this wall, half an hour ago. Oh, this is the same mask? The and same, the same oh. mask on the other side. Exactly. Oh. You know, Jerusalem is the critical point for make it or break it in this conflict. All what's happening around Jerusalem, the reality is that they are establishing where they are Judaizing the city and denying the people's rights, you know, the historic people's rights in this land and in this city mainly, is going to introduce us to a period where there will be not, not just a third intifada, probably a third war 
because Jerusalem is a focal point in this conflict. It's not just for the Palestinians and it's not just for the Israelis. This is a city, an international city of peace. Either we make it or we break it here. We began this documentary short film in late July 2006. This was the time that the Israeli Hezbollah 34-day war and invasion of Lebanon commenced. It was also at the time of the Israeli siege in Gaza. Earlier in 2004, we made a filmed documentary called The Israeli Wall in Palestinian Lands. As part of that work, we spent time in the East Jerusalem neighborhood of Abu Dis as the separation wall was being constructed. At that time in 2004, the wall was not yet continuous. There were breaks in the wall at several points where you could still cross on foot from one side to the other. By this visit in 2006, the wall at Abu Dis had been completed, although people like Terry could still make this half-hour drive around the wall to get to work. Currently, massive terminals have been constructed, and we expect on our next visit to have to pass through this terminal, and Terry, as a Palestinian with a Jerusalem ID, would need to obtain a permit before entering the West Bank, whether to get to work or to visit her family. The, the story of meeting with Terry Bulata actually begins for me in 1988. It was then uh, that I was with a team of Americans who were making the first eyewitness journey to the West Bank and Gaza during that first intifada, the nonviolent uprising. Terry then was in her early 20s and was a very competent and thorough guide. We skip ahead now 18 years for our reunion with Terry in her neighborhood of Abu Dis. In 2007, we will mark the 40th anniversary of the Israeli occupation of the West Bank and Gaza, 40 years since the 1967 war. This has been 40 years of land confiscation, settlement building, and the strangulation and ghettoization of the Palestinian population. To watch more documentaries and interviews about the Middle East, visit the Alternate Focus website, alternatefocus.org. Watch the video of the week right from the homepage. Or click on the link under Watch Our Shows Online. Look through our catalog of programs, select the one you want to see, and watch it for free. alternatefocus.org